zinc sulfate into one of the beakers and put a zinc plate in here and put copper sulfate in this beaker and put a copper plate in here. What's going to happen is that zinc would allow electrons to leave this side and go over to this side and then copper would take up those electrons and copper would be formed on that side. So this is what would be happening in this voltaic cell. Zinc becoming zinc ions in solution and copper sulfate, copper ions in solution would become solid copper. But this cell would not continue to work for very long unless we created a bridge here going across. Because once you have a lot of these Zn2 plus ions on this side, the tendency for them to continue to be formed would drop in time. So to continue to allow that zinc to be liberated and to be formed, you need to have something <coughs> to add into there. And by putting this salt bridge, in this case it's potassium chloride, chloride ions are going to come in here and balance things off to allow zinc to continue to give electrons. The same on this side. As the copper goes from Cu2 plus to Cu, you need to introduce something on this side to continue to make that happen continuously. So therefore the sulfates which would be left need to be associated with the potassium to allow this process to continue. So therefore only when you have the salt bridge then you have a complete circuit and you have a situation where in a voltaic cell chemical energy can become electrical energy. So people might say well how are we going to get chemical energy into electrical energy? But you don't realize that when you take a battery and you put it into a phone or to any device, that that is chemical energy that you're converting into electrical energy. And this is where it all came from, from the work of Volta when he created this cell. We have zinc undergoing oxidation. Oxidation is loss. And copper undergoing reduction. Reduction is gain. The voltaic cell <coughs> showing us a spontaneous reaction where chemical energy becomes electrical energy. In the voltaic cell and the electrolytic cell. See in the electrolytic cell now, we, we're, it's not a spontaneous thing. If you put sodium chloride in here and you connect it up with some wires and you even put a salt bridge across, you won't get a circuit. You won't get chemical energy giving you electrical energy. In this case, is the opposite. You have to put in electrical energy with these batteries to cause the lysis of the ions in this sodium chloride solution. So that's why it's called electrolysis. Put into one word, we have electro electrolysis. And with this current that's running through the system, what you have, you have these inert electrodes, electrons moving from this side to this side, so this side is the positive anode and at the anode what's happening is because it's positively charged then chloride ions in solution would lose their electrons, send them into the system here and then chloride ions free of electrons would give us chlorine gas. Chlorine gas would collect at the anode. Then on this side now with electrons moving towards this side, this side becomes negative. Sodium ions from solution, they don't become solid sodium, but what they do is they collect around here as liquid sodium. So you have liquid sodium collecting at the negative electrode, which is the cathode. That Na plus acquires an electron, reduction is gained, so sodium is reduced. Sodium ions are reduced to the liquid sodium. Chloride ions lose electrons, so they are oxidized to chlorine gas. Notice something here, the anode here is positive. What's happening on with the anode on this side? This anode is negative, but both anodes have something in common. What is that thing that they do have in common? The same thing is happening at each electrode. Zinc is losing its electrons. If it loses its electrons, its oxidation is lost. Zinc is being oxidized. Over on this side, losing electrons to become chlorine gas. But the charge is reversed. So the thing that justifies it and makes it being called the anode, it is the center where, in this case, 
electrons are being lost. Oxidation is happening at the anode. And at the cathode, reduction is happening. But in the electrolytic cell, the charges are reversed compared to the voltaic cell. The question is, what is the point of having either cell? Well, the voltaic cell is, was the birth of all the batteries that we've been using ever since that was invented. And then, what is the purpose of this? If we can do something like this, then we can get chlorine gas. Or we can get liquid sodium from the electrolysis of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is something that we can find naturally occurring, but we don't find chlorine in large amounts naturally occurring, or sodium naturally occurring, because they would react with each other. But this is quite stable. And then we can take this raw material and we can get chlorine gas. Or we can do this for other things as well, like potassium bromide. We can get bromine and potassium. The fuel cell, which we see here, is it's an application of the voltaic cell. Because going into the fuel cell in, in this diagram, and there are different types of fuel cells. The fuel cell itself is not really specified in topic 9.2, but it's an application. And the applications are really why we study things. So hydrogen gas goes into the system. In this membrane here, which again is something that you will have papers written on this, books written on it. I don't know too much about the details that happen here. But from its name, the proton exchange membrane, the electrons are stripped from hydrogen atoms. And those electrons, kind of like similar to what's happening in, in a leaf, in the photolysis of water in a leaf and photosynthesis. It's comparable to that. Electrons are going around on a trip here, from this side to this side. And the hydrogen ions migrate across the membrane. Then they recombine on this side with oxygen, and the waste product is water. What's the point of doing all of that? Is you create flow of electrons, which is a source of electrical energy. But the thing about the fuel cell in this application is that the waste product is totally harmless to the environment. So you can be behind a bus riding on a bicycle very slowly. And if it's using fuel cell technology, then you'll be fine. You won't be getting all that, all those diesel fumes that you might be so getting. So what is well. that fumes when this oxygen? This, this is the waste product, this is water. So this very waste product could be used to generate hydrogen. And in a sense, you could combine both cells like, like we have on that diagram at the back.